is up? And welcome back to another amazing episode of How to Invest in Commercial Real Estate. Coming to you from Jinx, Oklahoma. That was, that was cute. You, you like that? Your voice. Yeah. I mean, Coming to you from Jinx, Oklahoma. You should commentate the uh, Metro games this year. Uh, no. No? Yeah. You can become the I new, mean, I would, I would new say, voice of Metro High School. I would say the F word or something. They're like, hey, Joel, you got to leave. Your son's <laughs> off the team. Yeah. Timmy gets knocked the F out. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Back to real estate. So um, we have a lot going on. August, I think technically August is the slowest month in commercial real estate out of the 12 months. Not for us, it isn't. Well, yeah, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever. Anyway, we, we slowed down a little bit compared to June, July, May, April, and March. Um, we, we are a lot slower. Um, so we closed the Dawson Petromax deal. We closed our fluorescent retail deal. We closed our Amarillo retail deal. And at the end of this month, we are now closing on the Houston retail deal, which is our biggest deal to date. It's almost Joel's biggest deal to date. Almost. No, not even close. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is 14-2, the biggest one. Yep. It's like 16 and a half. So we're, we're getting close. Minus we're, iconic, but yeah. I mean, yeah. Minus the thing we're building and it's not done yet. I mean, it could go. It, it could be the biggest by an extra 10% because you could go. Anyway. Over budget. Can you stay <laughs> focused? I am focused. You're the one taking a shit on my numbers, man. All right. So I don't think August is slowing down because, we, yeah, 14 2 by the end of this month. By the time this episode airs, it might be full. But as of right now, there is a sliver of equity left. It was a big equity raise, and we've knocked out all of it, but about the last, what, few percent? Yeah, like 3% or so. Or... Yeah, you have to be accredited, though. Yeah. Have to be accredited. We've unfortunately had to kick out several hundred thousand dollars worth of commitments. I feel bad for this one guy. He signs up. I feel like exclusively for deals that you have to be accredited for on. Um, and it's not like we're, I mean, I guess we are picking which ones you have to be accredited on. But this one we advertised. We advertised yeah. for a long time. It was a, a massive equity raise. It's our biggest equity raise to date. That's good. Yes, good. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, uh, brought on a, a massive new partner. Super excited about cultivating that relationship on the LP side. All in all, we've worked really hard on this deal. We're super excited to go in and uh, take it over. Anyway, yeah, if you're seeing this, go check it out. There may be uh, a last $50,000 slot you may be able to scoop up. Otherwise, for those of you who have gotten your commitments in, we will close on this thing August 28th. Yeah. So seriously doubt we'll pay at a third quarter distribution, but Q4, um, we'll pay. Maybe a slightly prorated Q3. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, other news. We signed um, a letter of intent to sell our New Jersey Kitty Academy. We've been so, waiting a long time for that. That That has been a tough investment for us. It was a two-property investment. The first half went really well. We exceeded expectation, but the New Jersey one, we have not exceeded expectation the operator for this kitty academy just never could get the enrollment up and with interest rates spiking uh it really put downward pressure on the purchase or on the sale price so we're happy though because i think we're going to be able to get all the investors their money back uh without losing mm -hmm. any any money maybe even give them a modest return i don't well, know you may know what that is modest it's it's nine percent or so right i, th I think IRR? It's, yeah i think it's more than that i think yeah, it's I think like it's 10 or 11 10. Yeah. oh wow but yeah. even better than i thought yeah kind of it's not, not the best news but i mean beating not bad for our worst deal. Not bad. Yeah, that's going <laughs> to be a good one. But, and it, it was really because it was combined with the other one. Um, obviously, you know, we don't have to sell. We could hold out, you know, forever and wait until the back stock of inventory clears out, uh, interest rates yeah. lower. But, you know, in an effort to kind of end that investment, we did well in the first one. And now we're kind of being punitively punished the longer we hold on to that second one. So we're getting rid of that. We'll, we'll deliver um, a good return, you know, beating 30-year average of the S&P 500 is... is a good Not return, right? People yeah. people don't even do retirement calculators at 11% because they're so modest. So yeah. not bad. Um, we closed or are about to close on the Sal and Go in Princeton. Was it Princeton or Owasso? Well, we just signed the LOI on the one in Owasso. Okay. Um, but yeah, the one in Princeton, it may have been the Chipotle. Oh. I need to double check on that. But anyway, but still, um, we're starting to see some activity and some movement some and uh, with rates starting to come down 10 years down, you know, 50 bips over the last few weeks. Um, hopefully we, we start selling the ones that we want to sell and get that money to return to the investors because we got more deals that we need them to invest in. And so it's kind of turning that equity and, you know, it's good for us, but it's good for them. 
the, the faster we can turn their equity and give them returns, the, the more they're going to make. So, yeah, there's a lot of end of year purchases in the single tenant absolute net lease space. Um, just looking for that last bit of depreciation you can shove in the 2024 calendar year. So I think we'll get a big spike on that. Um, obviously, a big chunk of the U.S. thinks there's going to be a rate cut in September. They've kind of foreshadowed that for a while. You know, will we get one? How big will it be? What will that do to everything? So, yeah, there's plenty of time left in the year. I mean, we're taping. It's Wednesday. When, when is the inflation numbers out? Tomorrow? I, I thought they came out yesterday. I thought they were down to 2.9%. Okay, I'll have be, to look. Yeah, I could be wrong. but I thought, That's thought better I than the that. jobs report. I thought I saw that. Or maybe today. Maybe I saw that today. Maybe I can look it up while we're talking. Anyway. A lot going on. We are starting to see some activity on the sales side. Um, so we're, ex we're excited about that. Developments under construction are going good. I know we just finished the Starbucks multi-tenant retail deal in Marine Creek. I know we just finished up Callaway's, the nursery we did in Houston. They're about to open. Um, Starbucks, like I mentioned, in Marine Creek is about to open. We've got the donut shop um, and the few other tenants in that strip center. We've got Callaway in for, for permitting. sale already, don't we? Callaway's is for sale. Yep, yeah. we just switched um, to a national broker. We gave a local broker who kind of helped us in the beginning a shot to sell it. But um, now that Callaway's is opening, we went ahead and launched that to a national group. Um, what else? We've got um, the two TLEs in construction, the Burleson and the Grand Prairie. Um, both of those are going good. We... Yeah, everything's kind of moving along. So, topic for today. Guys, what is it? Well, you know, we, we actually talked about this a little bit on the last um, episode, but we're going to talk about uh, why you can look at two properties. One, for our example today, we've got one at a 9 cap and one at a 7.25 cap. And they're similar properties, but for some reason they're for sale for different prices, and we're going to talk about that. Different cap rates. Different cap rates, sorry. Yep. Yeah, and it, uh, that's right, guys. And this is the whole thing. Like I said last week, this is what we do: is we try to find, uh, you know, two, you know, properties that are at one cap rate and properties at another cap rate. What is the difference, and and how do we how do we get that value? Because if you buy at a nine and you sell at a nine, that's okay. But if you can buy at a nine and sell at an eight cap, uh, then your returns really go through the roof. And I, I kind of you know, kind of contrasted buying used cars. And saying yeah. you can find like I, I just bought uh, a, a Ford Explorer for uh, one of my sons, and I'm paying you know one number, but literally I can find it for eight thousand dollars more in another city, and it's the exact same car with the exact same miles. And you just ask yourself, why is that? I don't know exactly why that is all the time, but that's how real estate works. It's not a perfect market, and so you know when you're in residential like real estate, you drive neighborhoods until you know that neighborhood. And so then when a house comes on the market, that's an anomaly that you can take advantage of. You're going to know it because you've seen a hundred houses yeah. in that neighborhood. It's like, well, this one's 10% less. That's what we're going to show you today with these two. So yeah. uh, we have one, let, let's, let's start with the seven and a quarter cap, Brian. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some of the tenants that you can expect to find in the seven and a quarter cap. Okay. So this particular uh, property is in uh, St. Louis, outside of St. Louis. And the tenants are uh, sub like North St. Louis, North so not like not like the hottest area, but it's yeah. not a bad area, right? So there's a subway, there's a wellness center, there's an H and R block, there's a nail salon, and there's a, a city gear. Okay, so all uh, what we would call you know regional to, to local tenants. Yeah. No no national credit. Uh, you know no big time guarantees. Yep. Uh, okay, great. What? Um, Talk to us about the demographics a little bit of the seven and a quarter cap. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you the five mile number. Population is 250 thousand approximately. Um, in a five mile radius. So that's really radius. think about it, guys. That's like a 10, 10 mile diameter surrounding the property. You have a quarter million people, which is pretty decent. The uh, average household income in that five mile uh, uh, radius is sixty thousand dollars. Medium home value is about a hundred thousand dollars. So those those actually aren't aren't spectacular. Sixty thousand isn't terrible. You know, you, you, in the poor areas, the average household income will be roughly you know forty five thousand. Um, so when you get into the sixty sixty five, that that's solid. Um, really good demographics where you're you know really strong is going to be eighty to a hundred thousand or higher on average household income. A couple other things. Okay, uh, it's ninety percent occupied. And it's on a hard corner 
with 18,000 vehicles per day on, on one road and uh, 13,000 on the other. So about 21,000, 31,000. 20, yeah, 20, uh, 18, 18 and, and 13. 13, so about 30, 31,000. Yeah. What's the NOI? Uh, 400,000. Okay. Okay. So that's a seven and a quarter cap, which today with rates where they are, you're kind of even leverage. You might, you might get a rate in the seven range. You're still going to make money with this center, uh, but it's a class B center. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, class B. Average local tenants. Where, did, where? Where is this? In North St. Louis. North St. Louis. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got another one that Braden's got, it and it's in a suburb of aggressively Detroit. Aggressively priced. Yeah. I mean, just the, 7.25. I, I, it seems like it should be more full. It seems like the tenants should have better credit for that pricing. It seems like it should be in a better part of St. Louis. Yeah. Yep. I initially back the napkin, not understanding the the pricing behind that one. Yeah. We did. I'll just tell everybody we did not cherry pick this. All we did to get these two properties was about ten minutes before we got up here. We we opened up Crexy and we did a search for retail centers, B class yep. retail centers uh, around five million dollars mm-hmm. uh, that were seven cap to nine cap, mm-hmm. and then we just saw what came up, and then we just picked two that were similar. So Braden. This one's about five million. What's the price on this one? Um, five million. Five okay. million. Five million. This is in a decent suburb of Detroit. Yep. Um, not maybe not a great area, but not a bad area. Uh, very similar. Um, and that the other one is a suburb of St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, hit us with some of the tenants. Uh, yeah. Immediately right off the bat, you have O'Reilly and Dollar General. Decent. Both of those are decent. Um, you have a 13,000 square foot Biomat Plasma Center. I'd be interested to see the credit I, profile behind that. Yeah. I'm not sure where, what the credit is on Biomat, but but I, in my experience, those plasma centers tend to do fairly well. Yeah. Um, okay. Who else? Um, T-Mobile, a bunch of 1,500 square foot shop space tenants. Looks like two or three local tenants. Um, you have a city trend, so you've got some credit there. Yeah, the Dollar Tree's good. O'Reilly's is decent. So I would say these tenants match up really well to the tenants that yeah. are in the seven and a quarter uh, cap center. Yeah. Okay, let me go to the demographics page. I think it's toward the end. No, I don't, I don't have demos in mine, unfortunately. You're yeah, just- we, we don't have the demos on this. It says it's near the Dearborn Airport. Um, six miles from the Detroit Metro Airport. I uh, four miles away from a hospital. We already did this. I mean, it has. Uh, I think it was three hundred thousand people yeah. in a five mile radius. Right. Uh, it yeah, is house, household income on, on was like seventy five thousand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Versus sixty five thousand. Better. Yeah. Which is better. More homes, higher household income. Hard corner of fifty five thousand cars a day. I'm I'm talking myself into this one. No, I, so I've I already I'm already like we're already looking at this. So mm-hmm. so this had thirty one thousand cars. This has over fifty thousand cars. The demos are a little bit better here, uh, uh, population wise and average household income wise. Yeah. And and so what is the cap rate? Just the ask cap rate on this. The it's eighty eight percent occupied. This so, is ninety, so virtually the same. Yeah, you've got a little bit of room to lease it up there, but they're asking a nine cap for this. Um, again, outside of Detroit, it's in Inkster near Dearborn, which yep. is pretty nice. You've got a little bit of room to lease up. I mean, based on this, I would think that the parking lot and roof are trash. Yeah, maybe. Um, I, this has a lot of gross that. leases that I feel like you could convert over to triple nets, get some upside there. You're at half of, I mean, a third of replacement costs. You could buy this thing for the asking price at $78 a square foot. Hmm. So not sure the last time you quoted retail real estate. So let, let's just say that this is worth a nine. Uh, not, let's just say that this is worth an eight. Uh, you know, if, after you convert the leases and do some of the CapEx, but you can buy it at a nine. And that's saying this is at seven and a quarter. This may sell at seven and a half. I don't know. Hmm. But what's the NOI on this? 486. 486. So if you can get a point, uh, uh, one point of cap rate on 486, uh, what does that do for you? So if I, if I put 486 on an eight cap, that's 6,075,000. But if I buy it at a nine, 486, that's five, four. That's $600,000 guys in, in potential value. Uh, because this center 
is probably every bit as desirable as this center. And this center is probably going to sell sub eight cap. And you can buy this one at who knows what. It's asking a nine. You can maybe buy it at a nine and a quarter, nine and a half. You know, and so I think the market for both of these is is probably closer to an eight cap in in a I mean, I don't know. I I I, I don't know much about these markets. Where was that one again? St. Louis. I mean not Saint, I mean St. Louis. Yeah. I think neighborhood retail in St. Louis. I mean, we've bought several centers in St. Louis. I, I think you're you know, seven and a quarter cap on on maybe the good side of, of St. Louis um, to, to nine and a half, ten cap on, on some of the rougher sides of St. Louis. So you, you have a lot of disparity there. I don't think this is priced accordingly to where it's located in St. Louis. Well, mm-hmm. to the deal, it's just not. Uh, the yeah. only point we're, we're going through this exercise to, sh- to show you guys that the deals are out there uh, and they're right in front of you. And you, this, you, and gotta- you can't just focus on cap rate. No, there's a lot you got to focus on, but we were just trying to show you that here's two properties that are virtually identical in NOI, virtually identical in cap rate, purchase price, demographics, and kind of where they are in uh, relation to a major metro like uh, you know Detroit and St. Louis, and how differently they're priced. And so in that difference is where you can make money if you know what you're looking for. Right. If you look at hundreds of deals, you're going to find one of these at a nine cap that maybe should be an eight or an eight and a half. And you want to stay away from this. That's a seven and a quarter that really should be an eight and a half. Uh, and so if you can learn that arbitrage right there, then you have a chance to be really successful in buying commercial real estate deals. And you get that education by, by looking at a ton of deals because the, the deal of the decade jumps out at you when you look at hundreds of deals. And uh, because they all look the same, they all look the same. And then pretty soon you're going to run across one that looks the same as the other hundreds you looked at, only it's priced lower with a higher cap rate. And that's the ones you want to jump on. Or at least dig into them to find out, is wow. there anything I'm missing? Because yeah. sometimes you'll, you'll dig into it and it'll be like, well, it's a leasehold interest. You know, it's on a ground lease or something. And there's a reason. But if you dig and you can't find a reason and everything starts checking out, those are the ones we just keep going down the path until we ended up closing on it. Just must be a motivated seller, right? Could, could be, yeah. Or they bought really well. They've owned it yep. for 20 years. The parents died and the kids don't want it anymore. All these factors you know, are, play, are at play when people try to decide what they're going to uh, take for the asset. Any other comments right. before we wrap it up? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the big thing... For me on this is, is so many people, when you talk to them about commercial real estate, the, I mean, we have a tendency to do this sometimes to say, yeah, I buy eight cap deals just because a lot of the times we end up buying eight cap deals. It doesn't mean that you can't buy this seven cap deal and, and have something work. I, I think it's, it's too much of an easy laziness in your underwriting instead of just looking at the deal. Um, and saying, Hey, I've, I I'm looking for $5 million deals. You know, where, where does $5 million give me the most bang for my buck and, and trying to look through it from that perspective. Um, yeah, you can, you can buy this deal right now and you can not negotiate on the price. You can pay a seven and a quarter cap. You can get a six seventy five on the rate and you can make money as we showed you last week, yeah. you will make money on this, but you'll make way more money on this, maybe potentially double, uh, the percent return on that. And so, you know, they both make money, um, but we're just showing you how to maximize uh, your profits for your effort. So, and for all the brokers out there watching, right? If I'm a broker and I have two sellers, th- this to me is like, ah, I could, I could sell it if I get a perfect price. Mm-hmm. You know, like if somebody wants to pay me the moon, sure. That, that, that's, that's what I see in here after looking at that OM and the pricing. When I see this, I'm like, okay, this is, this is price to move. Yeah. Nobody's going to come in and, and low ball the crap out of this. Yeah, I right. feel like people are, are going to write an offer that starts with a five. It's listed at five, four. Yep. I mean, uh, good, good package put together here. So uh, brokers, I, I think now more than ever, the pricing on, on the face value of the listing matters, right? It's going to get clicks and it's going to get attention. But anyway, that is the show for today. There's deals out there. Don't just pay attention to the cap rate. And, um, if you haven't already, make sure to check out that latest Houston offering on our website. We still have a little bit of room and we will catch you next week. Next time guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.